picture this. 10 years from now, you're in a lovely little boat, bobbing around on the surface of some warm tropical ocean, preparing yourself to hold your nose and splash backwards overboard and see one of the planet's most unique and spectacular ecosystems. But once you're below the surface, you're struck not by vibrant flashes of colour and the huge array of weird and wonderful sea creatures, but by the barren wasteland of a bleached reef, not a fish in sight. Instead, stretching out as far as you can see, white coral skeletons sticking out of the sea bed like a bony graveyard. That's the bleak picture that's in store for us soon if we don't curb warming and fast. I'm Ella, a climate scientist with a PhD in Antarctic climate change, and this video is about tipping points. Not sure what those are? Don't worry, I got you. Stay tuned. A new report written by 160 scientists from 23 countries warns that Earth's climate is entering a scary new reality and that we are dangerously close to triggering catastrophic and irreversible changes in several parts of the planet. It warns of the risks of breaching the planet's thresholds of habitability, of crossing tipping points that there is no coming back from. And it's urgent, because we're on the brink of exceeding the very first one. Already, coral reefs are facing unprecedented dieback, jeopardising the livelihoods of people who depend upon them and threatening one of the world's most spectacular hotspots of biodiversity. The last two years have seen the worst coral bleaching on record, with four-fifths of reefs affected worldwide. This report warns that almost all coral reefs, that's 99%, will be lost. And that's even if, and it's a very big if, temperatures stabilise at 1.5 degrees Celsius. To really save corals, we need to cool the planet down again. But it's not just coral. Other thresholds in the polar regions, land and oceans are also dangerously close to being breached. Think the collapse of the Greenland ice sheet, the dieback of the Amazon rainforest, and the breakdown of one of the most critical ocean currents. This is the latest in a series of reports about tipping points that researchers have been releasing since 2023. If you've watched a few of my videos, you probably know what a tipping point is by now, but in just in case, or if you haven't, then here's a quick primer. Tipping points are thresholds beyond which change becomes, for all intents and purposes, irreversible. But these look different and happen over different timescales depending on the context. For instance, the tipping of an ice sheet may take several centuries, whereas the collapse of an ecosystem, for instance, could be much more rapid than that. Tipping points are thought to be present in lots of different parts of the planet, including the land, oceans and polar regions. It's very difficult to determine a hard threshold for the tipping of any particular system because there are just so many different things that can have an impact. So it's often more helpful to think about the level of increasing risk above certain temperature thresholds. That's what you're seeing here in this diagram from the Tipping Points report. Here we are in the yellow at our current long-term level of 1.3 to 1.4 degrees of warming relative to pre-industrial. The dashed line cuts through one and a half degrees. For each of the different tipping points shown here, the colours show that risk increases with every increment of warming above the threshold. The lowest temperature that we think these might kick in at is indicated by the bottom of the box, and then the top of the box is where we're pretty certain the system would be tipped. You'll also see that some tipping points have a much wider range than others, for instance, ocean current or ice sheet collapses. That's partly explained because we don't know exactly where the threshold lies for lots of these systems. But it also reflects the different timescales of tipping. Ice sheets take a very long time to collapse, so in some ways they're more resilient. But once a fragile ecosystem starts to break down, it can collapse actually very quickly. And unfortunately, that's what we're seeing for the first tipping point, coral reefs. Coral reefs are super important. Although they take up just 1% of the ocean floor, reefs host a quarter of all marine life. They're hotspots of biodiversity with complex connections and interactions between animals and plants. Reefs are an important part of the marine environment, protecting coasts against erosion and storms. What's more, the immense diversity of species in reefs provides food and income for millions of people across the world. Worldwide, about 6 million people source most of their protein from reefs, and around 1 billion people are estimated to rely on them either directly or indirectly for subsistence or their livelihood. 
You can usually find corals in warm waters. So you might think they'd like a bit of warming, you know, after all, more is more, right? Actually, they're very temperature sensitive, and here's why. Corals are actually made up of two different organisms existing in a mutually beneficial relationship, also known as symbiosis, if you remember your classroom biology lessons. The colour comes from tiny animals that live within the coral, which photosynthesize for them to produce food. In return, these little creatures get shelter within the coral, so one brings home the bacon, and the other makes house. However, when the corals get hot and stressed, they kick their photosynthesizing friends out, leaving just the white exoskeletons behind, giving bleached reefs their ghostly appearance. Once they're gone, the corals have no food source and they die pretty quickly, and with them go all the other animals that depend on the corals. Because corals have a tight window of temperature in which they're comfortable, reefs are quite sensitive to heating. Marine heat waves can cause short-term or localized bleaching, and long-term ocean warming, like we're seeing right now, adds a background of continued stress and increased frequency of heat waves, pushing these ecosystems to the brink. For several years, scientists have pointed to the collapse of this vital ecosystem as the planet's first real red line. And now they say the threshold for its collapse may be approaching sooner than expected. At a long-term average warming of around one and a half degrees Celsius above pre-industrial temperatures, most coral reefs will die off. In fact, we're already seeing that with current temperatures of about 1.4 degrees Celsius. The hotter it gets and the longer temperatures remain at or above this seemingly important threshold, the more corals will die and the more of these beautiful and important ecosystems will be lost. But coral reef die-off is only the first of several important systems that will tip into a new reality with further heating. I mean, it's obvious that we're going to exceed 1.5 degrees, and it has been for quite some time. Sure, while it may be geophysically possible to avoid, it is abundantly clear that it is not going to happen. But every fraction of a degree and every year we spend above 1.5 degrees increases the number of important ecosystems that will be lost and amplifies the risks to people all over the world. The longer we overshoot that one and a half degrees before we hopefully bring the temperature back down again, the more risk we carry. Above 1.5 degrees, we also fly perilously close to exceeding critical thresholds for other important climate systems. Those include the Greenland ice sheet, the Amazon rainforest, and the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, or AMOC, which you might have heard, a vital ocean current that maintains the relatively temperate and habitable climate of the Northern Hemisphere. And none of that would be good news. This would be a very long video if I dove into the details of all of the tipping points included in this report, and to be honest, they all deserve their own video. But I have made quite a few already about the tipping points in both the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets, which I will link somewhere down here. Let's just say briefly that one and a half degrees of global heating, a long-term average level of warming that I would guess will reach within about a decade or so, will initiate processes that could tip the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets too, locking us into multi-meter sea level rise over the coming centuries. In fact, this process could already be underway. At a long-term average warming of two degrees C, the risks of collapse rise for the increasingly deforested Amazon rainforest and the AMOC, whose loss would spell wintry hell for much of Europe's northwestern countries. And beyond that, well, it's not really a world I want to live in. Another kind of tipping point that I do want to talk about, though, is what this report calls positive tipping points. Because in the face of all of this, I always find myself struggling to see how we can turn things around. Because, like, surely we're screwed, right? Getting to net zero emissions in 25 years seems like a totally absurd goal, and stabilizing temperatures at one and a half degrees feels utterly impossible, let alone bringing temperatures back down again. But Science tells us that's what needs to happen. This report points to positive feedbacks that can amplify the positive actions of a minority, even when confronted by seemingly insurmountable barriers like the strength of the fossil fuel lobby, the short-sightedness of politicians, and the relentlessness of world events. The adoption of solar, wind energy, and electric vehicles in recent years has really taken off in a big way, and positive tipping points in things like battery storage and heat pumps are also not far off. 
And just like Earth system tipping points, these positive inflection points can trigger cascades of change that ripple out through society. The report notes that coordination and coalition building, which could be between nations, civil society, or even just in your own community, can accelerate and support these positive tipping points which also reinforces something that we've known for a very long time, that bringing change is a lot easier when you work together. And as governments across Europe and North America, including my very own here in the UK, try to clamp down on protesters and suppress our legal rights to have a voice on important topics like climate change, this point feels very important. There's strength in togetherness and building something with others, and if governments are criminalizing protest, it's because they recognize its effectiveness. Which brings us to the final piece of the puzzle. These changes, individual, technological, community-based, all need or benefit from policy to back them up, which ultimately comes from our governments. As we've seen, they haven't delivered on lots of fronts and in some cases are actively sabotaging attempts at building a better world, but targeted policies to support change might be more effective than grandiose top-level targets with no real substance. So if we can sneak specific but effective measures into policy through campaigning or lobbying or whatever means necessary, then we might be able to get some actually good stuff into the law books to drive all of that positive change that we need, even if our government's rhetoric doesn't seem to value the preservation of life on Earth. One last point in the report that stood out to me in particular was the threat of dis and misinformation about climate and the importance of good communication from trusted sources. So with that in mind, maybe you'd like to consider supporting this channel over on Patreon. I spend a lot of time evaluating the evidence that goes into these videos, and I spent 15 years in academia working on all of these topics, including four years getting my PhD. The financial support from my wonderful patrons really helps me do that, and I'm super grateful for any backing that you can give. If you can't chip in, that's absolutely no stress, but a like, a subscribe, and a share goes a hugely long way too. If you're in the mood for some more science, then why not check out this video next about polar tipping points, or if that one's feeling a little bit too bleak, then watch this one about why the 1.5 degree target matters. All right, peace out.